guest, man. I know. Yeah. I'm, so, uh, format. I'm so I'm so honoured. He's our first guest. Yeah. Rollinson, have you ready? Cool. How do humans welcome to Rediscover Human podcast? I don't even know what number it is because it's been a few weeks <laughs> since producer Lewis has been a, he's been a, a, away on a farm for a while. But we've got Lewis back, and we've come back with a bang, back with a vengeance. We've got our first guest, and what an aligned human it seems to be. Um, Jiu-jitsu legend, grip strength, connoisseur, and almost master. <laughs> Looking at some of these walls. You'll have to show us your limits. But um, we've got Raspberry Ape, Dan Strauss, everyone, as our first guest. Thanks for joining us. Oh, no, it's an absolute pleasure. I, I, I was just saying to Josh, like, I love everything that you guys stand for, everything that you guys are doing. So, yeah, it's a pleasure. Real treat, man. And just, just from the conversation we've had, I wish we recorded from the moment we arrived. It's always and, the way. <laughs> and uh, and the looking way. around this gym, and, and I'm sure we've got, we'll get plenty of content for people to check out. But what, like, from the journey me and Josh have been on this last year since we sort of <laughs> yeah. both been in Bristol, you're like 10 years ahead of us. Like, we're like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, what a perfect guest to have on. So, um, I don't know, we go straight, like, already you've got wet method stuff here. Yeah. You, you've been on wet method for like, Three years, you think? Yeah, I'd say, I, I think 2018 is when I first uh, when I first came across him. I have no idea how I came across him. Before most people in the UK are like, I'm the first UK qualified to yeah. the MQ, and I, well, that was less than a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like... Yeah, I have no idea how, you know, I, I think he had like maybe two or 3,000 followers on, on Instagram at the time, yeah. maybe even less than that. He, before he was Uncle Weck probably as well. Yeah, oh yeah, way before he was Uncle Weck, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I was just, you know, for me... I've been training for a long time, both uh, physical training in general and doing strength and conditioning stuff. And then, you know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for about 15 years. Yeah. Uh, and I've been doing strength and conditioning stuff, uh, I'd say for maybe 12 or 13 years. Uh, and as you go through that long journey, you know, you see some people who will get into one type of training and stick with it their whole life. And, and part, you know, part of me admires that. Part of me goes, damn, like that is some serious consistency. And consistency is important. But for me, you know, I... Not that I maybe didn't want to, just like my personality was, I was always looking, okay, well, trying to learn different things. So try different programs, be it like bodybuilding or powerlifting or strongman or different types of stuff. And, uh, you know, it was just a time where I was starting to get interested a little bit more in movement. And yeah, I came across uh good uncle weck yeah. and he was just david weck at the time and uh both to inventor and yeah that's and i guess he'd done the pools and the ropes so you've got ropes hanging up here. yeah i've got ropes i've got i've got the original rope and then i kind of made some of my own ropes and tried different Amazing. thicknesses and sizes and you stuff like played, that and, yeah yeah and uh yeah the rope so is something you like that because i've never seen you post but i don't know maybe you did yeah, when you yeah, first I, got into do it do you know what um i did i posted i post on my stories sometimes i use the rope every single time i work out Every single time I work out, and, and I have done for, for since I got them, so uh, two years ago, um, I used them at the beginning of my workout. And um, yeah, even, you know, the last fight that I had, I brought the, the, the rope with me. I brought a, a resistance, yeah, to warm up. And I was outside of the building just warming up. You know, I think, um, I think uh, it, it does a lot. And I think of all of his stuff, it does seem, he's gone through a lot of phases since I've been following him. Uh, he was big into the... Um, the pro pulses, which I know he still uses, but he was really, that was his main thing. And then it was the rope and then a lot of the foot stuff and the wet steps and all of that stuff and yeah. the foot alignment stuff that he went into. It seems that the thing that is actually really taking off is the rope stuff. Yeah. And you're starting to see, I know that you, 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 you make them yourself and there's another company, I think Octo Moves, which is your, yeah. yeah, they're European based. Yeah. European based? Based. yeah. Uh, so that you, you're starting to see a lot more of that stuff. And yeah. I guess like Octo Moves, I saw on a Facebook ad, I'm like, oh, okay. It's gone. It's gone like almost mainstream now. Yeah. He was at the second company and then, you know, I just got passionate. About yeah. It. I was like, this needs to go further. And I, I, when I was at Work Method, I said, you need to focus on the road. Like, they say what whatever works, like triple down on it, quadruple mm. down on it. And mm. I was like, the ropes, when I first went to the lab, I was like, this is magic. But mm. of course, margins and stuff for them and that, that their BOSUs are much more profitable. Sure. But the ropes has got much more like gr virality potential, hasn't mm. it? As, as for every athlete and every child and every old person in an old yeah. person's home could use it. That, that's it. And, I, and, and you see people use it and you see the improvements that they make. And I think it does so much. You know, I, I like to do it. So usually I begin every workout with something that warms the body up a little bit, but sort of warms the mind up as well. I think that's so important. So I, so I, do, uh, I do the rope and I do um, Indian clubs. Sort of that's, uh, 
I feel like the rope does my legs a little bit and my spine. I feel like it really starts to, you start moving and you get a bit of click, clicking and popping. You start to feel a little bit more warmed up. And then the clubs for my shoulders. Um, and, you know, I, I do some juggling sometimes. Just, just a, I think coordination is a really under utilized and under thought out training modality uh they people assume that you know like i learned to juggle because i have bad i told myself i had bad hand-eye coordination i couldn't throw or anything so i'm like well you get to a stage where you start realizing these things that you tell yourself you can't do you can like you can do anything yeah you can literally sure. do anything that you want to do there's very few scenarios you really have to get ridiculous before you actually start going somewhere where look it might take you 10 years to do it might take you 10 weeks to do it could take you an hour to do you know, you can learn to juggle in an hour you know and, and and stuff like that and 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 i start to realize okay well i can do that and then that you can build coordination as and movement and sort of the symmetry the right right you know obviously a lot of people are right hand dominant uh, in grappling and stuff like that, that can mean that when you're passing or where you're transitioning on one side to another, you start to feel uh, some imbalances there, some asymmetry there. In, in not just asymmetry is going to be natural, but asymmetry in your proficiency. Uh, and doing stuff like the rope and the clubs, where it's non both hands, non dominant, like all of that stuff, I love it. So, Great, yeah. Man. I think it really wakes up kind of both sides of your brain yeah. as well, for sure. When you yeah. get into a flow with it and you're playing with the patterns. And when you were saying then about it opening up your shoulder and your back, the one I find with it is my external obliques. Mm. When you do that underhand movement, mm. it really switches that on. And then when you're doing like the sandbag squats or something, that's for me, that's the key thing that I need to engage. Mm. So yeah, it works really well for that. Nice. So Josh, you have introduced me to Dan. Like, yeah. Through, and you guys have met before. Yeah, once before. Yeah, we trained here God, a couple of years couple ago. A couple of years now. ago, I'd yeah, say, yeah. yeah. So Josh is a friend of my brother-in-law's basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. So me and Dan's brother-in-law, Craig, went to Loughborough Uni together, we played rugby together. Okay. And then uh, when I was just starting out with Ape, uh, Craig brought me over to meet Dan. I brought him some like real sort of prototype products like back in the day. So it's quite cool because, you know, all your stuff's blown up quite a bit yeah, since yeah. then. And obviously we've made quite a lot of progress. So yeah, it's sick to reconvene at this stage. Yeah. yeah. And I actually knew of you a long time ago as well because I was on season one of UK Ninja Warrior. Oh, you were on Ninja Warrior? I was. Oh, no way. Yeah, I was. Because I, I think you were, were you episode one as well? Yeah. I, think I was, was on true. episode one. Oh, so true. I was on your episode. Because of course so we you- were you were somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But oh. I was wearing a mask and a cape oh. and a gi <laughs> and yeah. I had a hammer and was kind of just dressed like oh, a- no, Hammer, I might remember. Uh, yeah. But yeah, because you, you got the furthest of every, and like, I guess no, nobody won, but oh, you essentially yeah. won. In you got for uh, yeah. season one. Oh, yeah. cool, cool. So I knew of you from back then. How did you uh, get on? Didn't win. <laughs> 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 I did. I actually made it to a second show somehow. Did you? Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, but I was just doing it for shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, <laughs> but I did see more recently, though. You've been, I've seen your series on YouTube, Stones and Strangles. Yeah. And you went to Scotland. You got this passion for lifting heavy rocks. And me and Josh got into Strongman a little bit recently, but not mm -hmm. as far as you. And I, as I was saying earlier, I just remember in one of the first episodes, you're just there with a laptop and you've got a map of Scotland. Mm. And there's these like, highlighted points where these stones just happen to be and I thought that's so cool that you're going to drive around Scotland you're doing you're teaching your classes and then you're going to hit these spots and try and hit these legendary stones yeah where did you discover even the, the, the stones and get the inspiration for that yeah so like the, the stone lifting for me I guess was um it comes through the grip training, actually. So I was interested in grip training. I guess it, you, you that can... That huge passion, yeah. Dude, yeah, let's go, into, let's go into that. Please tell yeah, us. Yeah, it is. And, uh, see how much you, you know, as a, I, I, I guess i That's how I first heard of you, actually. Through grip. Do you know Luke yeah. Thomas? He's an MMA yes. presenter. But yes, he yes, mentioned yes. you yeah. and said about your crazy grip strength. And you might have done a competition on a YouTube video or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You lifted and it was like the pointy. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the horn top there. That yeah. rusty thing over there. Whatever show that was, yeah. I saw that. So that was years ago. Yeah. So yeah, you, so when did you first... You know, so, so grip is something as a... You know, first and foremost, more than anything, like I'm a grappler um, uh, and, you know, jujitsu and stuff like that. And I first got in, obviously grip is something just you, there's some stuff that you're told and some stuff that you learn yourself and, mm -hmm. and learning the importance of grip when someone's trying to choke you or you're trying to choke them, you don't have to be told, you know, my hand gave out, my hand wasn't strong enough. His grip was very strong and that's why he beat me up. So you learn on the job with grappling, the, the importance of grip. And then I was first introduced to, and I can't remember how, but you know, sort of the universe sent a book my way called Dinosaur Training, uh, a book by Brooks Kubik. Have you ever heard of it? It's a fact, like that's my Bible. 
Yeah. That is my Bible. And he was, the dinosaurs that he refers to in dinosaur training is like the old school strongman. Your Eugene Sandows and your Arthur Saxons and your Hackenschmitz and all of that lot. So those are the dinosaurs that you're referring to and sort of kind of get away from all of this crap that you're seeing, uh, all of these chrome barbells in your in, 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 in mm-hmm. Planet Fitness and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. And that's when I, because I wanted to get into strength training. I joined a gym and then I started reading dinosaur training. I was part of this gym for a couple of months and then he was like, screw the gym, become a garage gorilla. And I just bought, and it was, and a lot of it was about, you know, he, he, the guy Brooks had a bit of a background in wrestling and he spoke a lot about thick bar training and grip training and how important it is. And if you're not able to transfer your power into something, then you can't, it, it's worthless, especially as a grappler. Um, you know, I always say is if you're a boxer punching someone in the face, you need strong wrists. And you actually find that a lot of um, boxers, even the big guys, they have really weak, grip mm. they can have really weak, weak grip because it's always you know it's just closing their wrist and a lot of them have wrist problems because they wrap their wrists up really tight and they don't train it a lot mm. um and i've been contacted by a lot of like you'd be surprised these big strong jack guys but they say they've got relatively weak grip because they don't really focus on it too much when you're striking you're able to transfer power into someone very simply when you're grappling and it's pulling is very different if you can pull 200 kilos but your grip gives out after 50 kilos you can't pull 200 kilos. Mm-hmm. That is your limit. So that got me down a, a, a road into thick bar training and other sorts of grip training. And I guess like I just have a, I guess a collector's personality, which is how like I, I come, you know, I get more and more stuff. Whatever I'm doing, it's always, I, I, I don't just want one. I want 20 of them. I want the different types and I get obsessed with it. Passionate, like that I think bit. that's okay for people. Yeah. The whole minimalist culture came about, but I think, and so then people can, and I've been the same, start to feel guilty, but yeah. collecting all my different kettlebells. And then I was yeah. like, but I'm passionate about this right I know, now. So I it's know. Okay, so. Yeah, it is that. There is that big movement about, uh, you know, <laughs> this kind of completely different from how I am. And I love the idea of these minimalist uh, uh, ideologies yeah. where if you haven't worn something in the last three weeks, then chuck it out. If you haven't used something in the past, I'm like, no, don't. I'm the, obviously, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I like get more stuff. I'm like, if I get a piece of equipment, if, it, if it's good, even if I don't use it, I'm keeping it. Uh, so people you do are it like this Casey Neistat stuff. Yeah, all good, isn't it? yeah, well, I know. Doing it before him, right? Pro, well, I don't. He's pretty old school, to be fair. Casey's pretty old school. Oh no, 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 no! I, I just uh, man, this I've I've got like a series of pictures from my first wall of grip. The first wall of grip was a piece of uh, wood, maybe like uh, a foot by two foot, and it had like five things on it. it had like two grippers <laughs> and like a piece of plastic, some crap, like really crap things. Yeah. And then it got a bit bigger and then it went on the wall. And then, you know, it was one board, then two boards and three boards. I'm sorting out the fourth board now. Uh, so everything just keeps on growing. And uh, But yeah, anyway, so, so a lot of the, so I kind of got really interested in grip training and started to see the benefits on my grappling. And um, we're seeing this name in the sort of grip sport world. There's this whole thing that the, niche sports are such an interesting thing. And, and, and like sure kind of you, you come from parkour, which is mm-hmm. kind of went a little bit mainstream, but it's still yeah. a niche sport, mm-hmm. but small enough where I bet, you know, all of the main parkour people or, or the time yeah. when you did and like jujitsu is the same. And when you're in that sport, you think that that's everything. Like I think jujitsu is the biggest thing in the world because everyone that I know knows about jujitsu and, and, uh, and, and stuff like that. And grip sports, another one, you see another thing like, like stone lifting or grip sports and for these people that's their whole life but it's like crazy it's like this tiny you follow them sport, on instagram and then every post it, is about it. that and yeah, it's just that yeah, yeah, world yeah. yeah i uh i saw you trained at the commando temple not too long yeah, ago yeah, yeah. so i trained there a few times in depth oh, that's a beautiful that's a crazy facility, gym. Man. it's, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like this right but like four times the size Bigger, that's it they got a lot of stuff that's yeah, really cool really and cool. rob's a good guy i've had him on my podcast actually so i've known rob uh since since pretty much since the commando temple first opened okay cool uh yeah he, he's into grip right yeah that's, that's it and and, yeah. and and he's competed in so uh, there is a community there is a proper community then. A co- yeah. every single thing you could think about yeah, there yeah. is a sport you may have never heard of it and there is a community that is die hard about that sport so are there grip competitions there's grip competitions there's international grip competitions there's British championships, there's world championships, there's it's unbelievable. There's record boards for all of these different things. What's the main, like a world championship. Uh, so like, like um, I guess this is a big one, or is it nah, the, so the grip? Now? Okay, so so you've got the Lips stuff with sort of stuff with the grippers. It, there is a load of things on my wall, and it'll kind of bring me on to what I was gonna say. Okay. But um, the, there's like world records for all of these different things, the horn top and the, 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 the pinch grip and all of these different things have different world records and different competitions. In terms of the grippers, the grippers are actually something that kind of broke through a little bit into the mainstream through a company called Iron Mine. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of them. And they sell Captains of Crush. 
You heard of Captain Crush? You heard of Captain Crush? So I think my dad's got a pair yeah. of those like, in the garage. Super, they are super, uh, they're kind of, they're the first company that really came out with well-made hand grippers. Mm. So you get these crap, these crappy plastic ones that you get from China and they're just, they're useless. And I've got loads of them. Uh, but but these Captains of Crushes, they're made by a company called Iron Mind and they, um, they're, really well, they're really well made and they have certifications. So if you can close the number three under whilst being judged, then you get a certificate and blah, blah, blah. Your name oh, goes wow. on the internet. <laughs> so there's like proper, and, yeah, and uh, originally I was planning to do that, um, which is why I have so many. Uh, and then they have another one, which is a steel bending certification called the Iron Mind Red Nail. So again, you bend the red nail, you bend this short piece of steel under judged conditions and then you get a certificate. And, and I, di I did that maybe four years ago. I set out with the goal of, of, of doing it. So like even something like that, like a really niche thing, but it becomes people's goals. And Can you use your legs for that? So or there's different types arms. of bending. So the red nail is an unbraced bend. So you're not allowed to brace okay. on anything. Okay. And then you have other steel. So uh, David Horn, who, who's someone who I'm going to talk about Did in a second. Yeah, 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 I'm going to mention him again. Uh, he runs these events called Steel Shredder, which is the steel bending. And each one is a different type of steel bending. Sometimes it's bending. Sometimes it's snapping steel. Sometimes you're snapping short steel. Sometimes it's long steel. Sometimes you're bending on the leg or in between the legs. And people all over the world, world get steel sent over from Staffordshire and they video their attempts at doing this and it's a whole community so it's it's really crazy but David Horn is the person who um I who I first became aware of stone lifting just the idea of stone obviously you know about the atlas stones and stuff like that um which interestingly the atlas stones come from Scottish stones okay. so there's Scottish stones called the McGlashan stones uh, they were used in a strongman competition. Someone saw those, made replicas, and they became what they we now call Atlas round, Stones. Then, they were, weren't quite as round, but they were relatively round. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they became Atlas Stones. So mm -hmm. it kind of, you can trade, which I only found out when I was up uh, doing stones and stones. You just make a circle of concrete. It's like yeah, a, exactly. an idea, but, but no, it but came you, from. You, you know, everything has a, you know, every idea has a birth point, it has an origin. Uh, and I was uh, getting into, to, Grip, not, I wasn't getting into grip sports, even though I've competed a little bit. I uh, just wanted to train my grip more. And I came across, uh, I think David Horn just had a hoodie that had him, that was like a stone lifting hoodie. And I was like, uh, what is that? Stone lifting? Like, and it wasn't an Atlas stone that you used to see in on, you know, on Christmas Eve and World's Strongest Man or whatever. Um, it, was, it was like a, a weird shaped stone. And I kind of looked at it a little bit and kind of ignored it. And then later on when I was more interested, I had a back injury a back injury that I basically, there were a lot of things that I couldn't do. There were some things that I could do. One thing I absolutely couldn't do was pick anything off the floor. And I don't mean big, heavy stones. I mean a pencil. You know, it would have been, if I, you know, you give me 10 reps of picking a pencil off the ground, I'm out for two weeks. It was, it was, it was bad in that way. And um, so I, 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 at that point I was getting, I was learning more about stone lifting, but was like, oh, well, I'm never ever going to be able to do that. That's not even an option that I'll be able to do. And then came across the Dinny stones, which again, it's not the same as normal stone lifting where you're picking it off the ground. It's, it's, it's these ring handles. Yeah. So they use the, um, the, the Dinny stones were originally used as a counterweight for, um, when they're building a bridge in Scotland and, uh, heard about those again, I'm never going to be able to do that. 333 kilos of stone that you have to pick up at the same time. Uh, just a pipe dream, really never going to happen. Ignored it. And, uh, whenever David Horn makes something, I just buy it straight away. <laughs> he makes something, I send him a message, David, I'll take one. Sometimes I'll take two. Yeah. Straight away, I get it to add to the collection. And David made some Dinny Stone trainers, which are the ones over there, actually. And I was like, oh, am I going to break my rule and not get a, a, a new David Horn invention? Uh, be just because I don't think that I'm c I can do the Dinny stones, I thought, screw it, I I'm going to get the Dinny trainers. And I got the trainers and I started training with them, but from an, an elevated height. Just started light because I had them. I'm not going to buy, you know, all the stuff here is functional. I don't just buy it to, to look pretty, but I wanted to give it a go. And I started doing it. Do you load plates onto it? Yeah, you can load plates on, yeah. And I started doing it and my back was okay. And I started to get heavier. My back was okay. Then I got to full dinny weight, almost three. Like got got to like three hundred kilos. My back was fine. I'm like my back's getting stronger. So then I dropped the weight down to the dinny weight and started training. And thought, you know what? I can do the dinny stones. So I found that you know, you, there's this big thing. I don't know if you find the same thing with injuries where someone can't do something, they run away. 
And if they can't do something because of a weakness somewhere, they run away from it and then they get weaker. So for years, I was trying to find ways of dealing with some of the limitations that I had physically from the injury and nothing was really working too much. And it was doing something that I thought would hurt it worse that actually made it stronger and just being careful with it, you know? Uh, So that's how I kind of really got into it, which is I decided that I was going to do the Dinny Stones And I started at that point also because my bat was getting stronger, started doing something else that I'd never thought I could do, which is get into heavier sandbags. So I started training with sandbags and before it would have been just not even wouldn't have comprehended being able to do it. And I started being able to lift sandbags. So when I went to do the Dinny Stones and I learned about the history, because like anything, nothing, I always explain this to people. People are like, "What, what, like, why get a sword handle made up? You know, so you can lift like a like like the sword and the stone legend stuff like that. With with a story, with a narrative, everything's better, right? <laughs> you need a story behind something. Mm-hmm. It just makes it better. Totally, yeah. You know, you 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 go and you're gonna climb a mountain. If that mountain has a cool story, even if it's not real, that story might be someone else climbed it. That story might be they say that a dragon is buried dragon. underneath. You know, dragon, yeah. like that story can be anything. But when you start connecting stories to things, they become more important. They start to hold more gravitas, um, which goes back to like something a lot, a lot more abstract, which is like, uh, why, you know, why does a five pound note value what five pounds because there's a story we all agree on that that's what money is or you know laws are just stories that we all agree on they're just things that uh, governments these are all just stories so everything you know obviously that's that's getting into a lot more abstract stuff but mm. you get the idea it's important so uh when when i went to do the dinnies i started learning about it and then started to learn about some of the other stones and when i did the dinny stones and uh, they're about 20 minutes away from the inverse stone which is a proper manhood stone you pick up off the ground. It's just like a bit, it's like a squashed atlas stone, 125 kilos, quite slippery. And- Is there um, a goal to get it to a certain height or- Basically, there's always, there's five, five heights to any traditional stone lift, which is wind beneath the stone. Yeah. You know, any, any, an inch (laughs) off the ground, wind beneath the stone, uh, inch off the ground, and then to the knees or to the lap. Uh, to the chest, to the shoulder, and then press overhead. So for the most part, generally, I would always consider a full lift being kind of loaded it as if you were going to put it onto a small wall or something, onto a plinth. So I like to get it to sort of a high chest position. But technically, breaking it off the ground, you can sign the book and... I lifted the stone. 125 kilos overhead stone. That's, you know, a few one people have done that. A few people have done that. And that is incomprehensible strength. Just unbelievable strength when you're pressing stones. Because uh, with the, I'm not, uh, I saw you pressing um, the. Uh, the balls. Yeah, yeah. The slam balls that I'm sitting on actually. 50 kilo slam balls. Yeah. Uh, and with that, there's a little bit of gifts you can kind of get under. But with the stone, you have to, you can't come underneath because mm-hmm. there's no grip. Mm-hmm. So you have to be on the side slightly and you need internal pressure mm-hmm. as you're pressing up. It just, it's not the same. People think a hundred kilo stone is the same as a hundred kilo barbell. It could not be more different. No way. And uh, yeah, you slip and it's all, it's good night for you. I think what people underestimate as well is once you get something up onto your chest, that's it. You, you're not breathing when that's sat on your chest. Yeah. So like that final bit of the lift, you've got to brace and prepare with no yeah. breath coming into your body. <laughs> people just don't expect that. And by the time you've made an effort to get it up onto the chest, you know, you're, most people are knackered and then they're like, oh, there's this extra element that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sto- sto- it, it, the, the most similar that you're going to get with something that you're going to find in a gym is going to be like a, a big log press. Mm-hmm. Because also with the bar, the center of center of mass is very close to you. With a stone, it's with a stone that can be a foot wide, the center of mass is going to be really far away. So you're having to deal with that as well. So yeah, pressing it overhead is another thing. But yeah, I, so anyway, I did the Dinnies. And I thought, I'm pumped up. I've got adrenaline. I'm here. It's 20 minutes away. Ate some cookies, get some sugar in me, and then drove to the Inverstone and lifted the Inverstone. And that is... And that, so that was pretty much one of the heavy... It's like the most famous manhood stone in yeah. Scotland. That only said it was 120. Yeah. So you got that to chest. I got that to chest. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple That's, of times. I tried wow. to shoulder it, but it, it wasn't having yeah, it. But yeah. I got it to chest a couple of and times. And then you lifted, and that was 300, you said? 333 that? kilos, yeah. And it's just deadlift. So it's, uh, it's two large rocks um, with... A, a ring handle in each one, slightly different size. The The heaviest one is 188 and the lighter one is 144. And you can basically lift them however you want. You can straddle them, which is how most people do it. Side by side is easier for some people, but harder for most. But basically, wind beneath wind the stones. Beneath it, yeah, that's yeah. it, that's get them off the ground. 300 kilos. Yeah, it's, it's heavy absolute, weight. And, I tell you, and, and then I came home and then I started doing more research about stone lifting and learning the history of the stones. And then, uh, you know, because basically I, I, I had a jujitsu 
seminar tour around the UK and, and someone asked me in Scotland, would I do a seminar there? And I was like, it's quite far away, you know, it's a long drive. But I thought if I can get a load of seminars there and then do something else in that time. So in the end, I got five seminars in Scotland and thought I'm driving. I did a 1500 miles around Scotland in the five days. Yeah, a lot of driving. And, uh, and I thought whilst I'm there, I'm going to try and do as many of these manhood stones I could yeah. and and I uh, thought I need to document this and that's how stones and strangles came about but man it was it was a that's on YouTube so people can check that just to reiterate stones yeah. and strangles on YouTube and how many did you hit then in I did how many did you attempt and how many uh, did you get I hit every stone that I attempted thankfully that yeah. is a spoiler alert unfortunately yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, yeah. for the show but I hit them all uh, I did if I remember them the Glen Cleosh smaller one the um, Saddling Mare the Fiona the Inver again, uh, the Newton Moore, the Dalwini, maybe six or seven stones. And that was all wind beneath or how many to the chest? All to chest. So uh, they're all to chest. The, um, the Glen Cleosh stone, there's two of them. One's very light. It's about, I think it's 70 something oh, kilos. Yeah. So I pressed, I pressed that one. Yeah. And then the other one I couldn't find. Yeah. Uh, I genuinely couldn't, but even if I could, I couldn't have lifted it. It was 180 kilos. Uh, and then the saddling mare is a really fun one, which is uh, the, the saddle is the stone and the mare is this huge, enormous stone in the ground. Mm. And the, the test is to lift it and place it on the, the mare. So saddle the mare and to place it on so you can take your hands off of it. Balance. So, yeah. And when I did that, it was so wet. Uh, it was like absolutely drenched there. And um, the, the, the stone was soaking. And so was the, you know, both, both stones were soaking. Uh, but the mud underneath it, underneath the platform was just, it was, a, it was like two or three inches of just bog. So what I did, there was a tree that had just been felled next to it. So I sort of kicked the smaller branches off and laid them down and created like a wooden platform <laughs> so I could stand on it and get something solid to stand on and then sort of worked it up. And it was, uh, I had to get it a lot higher than, than, than I would hope that I would have if it was drier, but idea, you're yeah. probably sinking as it was going up. Right? Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's, so it's one thing to stand on the stone and then stand with a hundred kilo stone on you. You're really going down into it. But was that the heaviest one out of those? Lots? No, the heaviest one was the Fiana stone, which is 127 kilos, um, very awkward shape. Um, but that, that was like the last one that I attempted. That was for me, because the, the heaviest one prior to that was the um, Inverstone. I'd already done the Inverstone, so I didn't consider that really a challenge. For me, the Fiona was the big one, and um, it, was, it was just in a beautiful location. You know, like I was saying before, this big open field, there was nobody there. We lost internet, we, we lost a phone reception like an hour into driving into this tiny little glen mm. and uh, this this mountain range, these sheep are in the, we're basically in a, in a field with, with these sheep. And uh, it was, the stone was just drenched in, what it, what it, the stone sits on a small plinth, which originally you would have lifted it onto, but because the, the farmland, the topsoil is raised, mm. the plinth is a couple of inches tall. But it sits on top of that on a bit of a, a bit of a slope. So I took it off of the plinth to get it onto a big area and it was so it'd been raining so much that it hit the ground and slid and just got absolutely caked in mud and probably a lot of sheep shit as well to be honest. Uh so that was already the heaviest one and I made it 10 times harder <laughs> by just soaking it in uh in mud. Uh but that's the thing when 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 the harder they are the more of a battle it is and then the better you feel when it's done. Yeah. But it's uh, something that you guys, I think you guys would love to do. I think it. you might have just set us off. And I think, yeah. I, on, honestly, it is, it is such a, and uh, uh, I know some guys that I think um, inspired by my journey, quite a few people have gone up there and uh, which is kind of part of the, what, why I was doing it is the show like this is a really, you know, spread awareness about this. So Keep it's it not alive, just a, yeah, it's supposed to be dying out. That's it. Like, and, 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 and there's all this Instagram gym business. That's it. And there's something beautiful about um, traveling, doing a pilgrimage to perform a strength feat to, yeah. to every time, every person who puts their hands on, but even more so every person who lifts that stone, you are part of the history that goes back hundreds of years. Mm. You know, if that, that stone and some, some it's of just them, a bit of rock. It's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. One it's random, for, like, for there some, won't be any other replica of that. Rock that's it. For some people, it's just a rock. But if you know, and, and there's this feeling, I mentioned it in Stones and Strangle, which is you've done the research, you, you've got the picture and then you're walking through the field and you see it. And there's that instant. It's almost like uh, you've been watching your favorite celebrity on TV and then you see him in real life. And, then, and then you go lift him up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you've but, got big plans for... You, you've been inspired and you said you were telling us earlier you want to go further with this. You've got yeah, a new, so, new ventures on the yeah, horizon. Yeah, so for, for me... 
I guess doing stones and strangles and doing the Denny stones, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a goal orientated person and jujitsu, <laughs> but jujitsu is a very difficult, um, sport to be goal orientated in because for the people that are affected exactly <laughs> exactly so you yeah. pick a sport where i could train for 16 weeks my i'm in the best shape of my life and my technique is sharp i've been working new stuff and it's just working perfectly i could do every single thing possible to be in the best preparation for a match or a tournament mm -hmm. But the other person's just better, or the other person's trained harder, or the other person's Has that strong. one gap in your that, thing. Or, or, yeah. or I make a mistake, he capitalizes on it. Yeah. A lot of stuff is out of your control. And that I'm fine with that. I kind of that's what I bought into when I joined the sport. But it's nice to have something else where I control everything. You put in the work, you're gonna do it. Exactly. And that that's why originally, and it all started with the red nail that I mentioned earlier, the bending that the doing the certification for the red nail. And I set myself a, a challenge because originally when you start getting in the strength training, the nice thing about strength training, especially when you come from something that isn't, that, that, that is effective from other people, the nice thing about it is you control everything. You set a goal of, I want to squat, um, I want to squat 200 kilos and no one else, you know, what's that? Henry Rollins, 200 pounds is always 200 pounds or whatever. 200 kilos is always 200 kilos. It's on a bar, it's not moving, it's not fighting back. If I do the work, I get strong enough, I can squat 200 kilos. And I did that and I, and, and I had that as a goal. And then once I did it, I'm like, but what now? Is it to squat 220, 250, 201, you know? And, and you can kind of keep on chasing that for your entire life. So there's something nice about setting weird individual specific, hyper specific goals it's not lift 200 kilos it's mm. not it's not lift 120 kilo sandbag it's lift that stone mm. it's not the same as 120 kilo stone over there it's not the same as 120 kilo at the stone it cannot be replicated it's mm. different density different size different grip it's outside it's wet it's raining mm. you know all of these different variables that, that reminds me slightly of fell running yeah you know, so they have like the bob graham yeah you heard of that and they've got the ramsey round in scotland mm. and it's like people can run 10k like mo farah on track and that's 10k it. is always 10k that's it but those have stories and myth and you know the bob graham's the name of a guy who yeah. ran it on his birthday or whatever it's like yeah there's the history to it and, and if you get it you're on a certificate and you get in a book and it's like yeah so it's Brit a britain has a lot of that it's really cool to it's, see. it's a perfect example and i think um you know so for me originally it was and it was stuff to complement my grappling uh, so the red nail was like, if I can bend a red nail under certain conditions, uh, you know, uh, certification conditions, if I can get uh, qualified on this or certified on this, I will have strong grip. I will have strong wrists. Mm -hmm. So I set about making that my goal and I did that. And then How after you I trained to bend a nail, do you just bend lighter nails? Pretty much you bend lighter nails. <laughs> you buy it as a website, yeah, the forums where That's you're in. That's it. You, 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 you will be shocked. There is <laughs> anything you can never think of. It exists. Yeah. There are companies. That's the rule that, of the internet, isn't it? That is, what, what that's the beauty rule? of the Anyone internet. Anyone know what number rule that is? I used to know what number it is. Like rule 28 <laughs> of the internet. If you can think of it. it it's it. Yeah, yeah. And there's a company that makes bender's bags because in in America they don't in America they don't use the word bender Benders. to mean what it means <laughs> over here yeah, yeah. so they sell bender's bags and yeah. um and they don't think anything of it but then I say I've got a bender's bag and I'm a bender <laughs> and everyone laughs uh but yeah you 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 know so I certified on that and then you set another goal and then the goal was to do the dinnies and you do the dinnies so the goal is to do this stone and then you know for me now I've done I want to go back to Scotland and do the heaviest stones in Scotland. I missed out some of them. Uh, but really the big goal for me is to go to Iceland and, and do the stones in Iceland and specifically, which is, I'd say the most, um, one of the hardest and, and, and most famous stones in the world, which is the, the Husafell stone. Which I think I've seen a video of Hathor trying to do that. Hathor there's still like holds a group the, of them. Trying to do that. He's rocking up. <laughs> Yo. Hathor, yeah, I know. <laughs> Hathor uh, has the world record. Um, he carried it 90 meters. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's not that much for... And, and the thing is, I'm not... It's um, not even double what it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and and the so thing how is... Heavy, how heavy is it? It's 185, 186 kilos. Yeah. And you have to, it's a um, kind of heart shaped almost. And you have to lift it up and walk it 50 meters around a goat You have pen. to walk it 50 meters yeah. on top of lifting it. Which anyone that's done sandbag carries. Yeah. Which a sandbag so, will bend to your stomach for one. Yeah. Which is easier. And even just doing like 50 kilo sandbag carry for like 50 meters. Anyway. You just can't breathe. It's hot, yeah, can't yeah. breathe. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and for me, you, most people, someone actually asked me, because I was speaking about this. I just uh, did the Husserfell trainer on, on my Instagram. And someone said, 
uh, you might be the lightest person to ever do it if you do it. And I was like, I did not even think about that. Yeah. You know, I'm at like 90 kilos. I'm not a light guy, but the size wise to get your arms around the stone and get them connected, I will, I'm, I'm almost certain that I won't be able to connect my hands. So it will be kind of gripping on as hard as I can as I try it's and make run. a big difference. Yeah. And there's, there's something about that. And I guess the fear of not doing it is a bit exciting. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing really exciting about, um, about doing something that you know you'll do. You know, there's the, 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 the excitement comes with, I guess that's sort of what you're trying to mimic on like a roller coaster is you might die. That that's literally what they're trying to like override your your rationality and make you think that no, nah, this is dangerous. Humans aren't meant to move this fast. We're not meant to flip upside down. That thrill of uh, nothing's exciting if you know you're going to succeed. And 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 even now, you know, for me, I'm realistic in a way. I'm not planning to go there to to uh, not be able to do it. So my training, you know, when people go, when you go into Husserl, you must be ready. You can do a 190 kilo sandbag squat. You're ready to go. I'm like, man, I might be two years away from going i might be five years from going if if, if i qualify for adcc and i focus on adcc and, and i'm not going to go and do that for for years maybe it may, might be six months i don't know uh but even now even when it's in a, a an unknown period of time away there's a bit of me was like that that you're going to travel all this way you're going to fly to iceland you're going to get in that car you're going to find the you know get the coordinates and you, you're looking for the little church that means that you're 30 meters away from it or whatever and <laughs> go down there and then you're going to see it and pick it up and maybe it will go up and maybe it won't go up Ooh. it's exciting you know yeah totally. it's cool it's like yeah. game day isn't it like you yeah, work towards something like almost finals day yeah, yeah. Uh, but that box. sandbag you've got over there is 190 kilos right no so the big red one is 200 kilos okay so is that's that gonna be a pretty good bent if you can get that off the deck yeah i uh, so the th yeah the thing is with um yeah you're not you're not wrong actually it's I'd say that that would be harder. So quite, even if that was 185 kilos, it would Size still be harder. Yeah, the shape of it. And um, I actually find lifting sandbags harder than lifting stones. Um, it's that dead weight property. Mm -hmm. What's your main training? For the Husserville? Yeah. What so the, the, it will be the Husserville training stone and the yeah, sa oh, a combination got, of sandbag training. The so the big, red, the big red shield is a loadable metal Husserville replica, which I've had for years. And mm. you just put plates in it. And then the stone- Did you know about stones when you even had that loadable plate? Oh yeah, I knew what the Husserville so you knew was. What it was. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah I knew like, what it was. And then yeah. is that, what, how similar weight is that? And the, so the, 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 coffin the, the coffin stone over there is 125. So okay. for me, it was something light that I could kind of use a bit for Rest conditioning out, yeah. and I could work on, on, on getting that up. And I guess I could put more weight onto it. Eventually I'll work up to, you know, maybe buying another one that, that's closer, you know, maybe even the actual weight. But even then it's different shape. You know, it's very dense. When you actually see it, it looks really small mm. um, because it's, it's a natural stone. It's not concrete. It's much more dense than concrete. Mm -hmm. There's a company that sells them. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that company is called uh, Spartan Atlas Stones. Actually. Is that they the make... guy's main job or is it a side job? Like, uh, I, a, you know what? Size. He makes a lot of stones. Yeah. He makes a lot of stones. I and love, cool, people yeah, stones and really stuff cool. like that. So, uh, yeah, like you said, anything you can think of, you can make. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, the Husserfell is is like the the big strength goal for me. I think that's a natural one when you talk about stone lifting. There are other stones there. Um, there, are, there is a really... There's some stones with some really cool stories, but they're very heavy. 200 kilo stones. There's a 280 kilo stone, which is uh, which I was mentioning before, which is meant to be the 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 um, giant's finger, and it's very long, relatively thin, but it's it's very long. It's it looks like a finger, and you stand it upright, and all you have to do is get wind beneath it so kind of a, is there many people on that list i don't list. know i have no idea yeah, yeah. Uh, so imagine it's a long list no. 280 kilos so for that again like i'm i'm commissioning um specific bits of equipment for me to train with that. With that, it's, you know it's within the realm of possibility <sighs> it's just wind do you know what the, the i know it's a massive yeah you know that that's and that's the thing i guess like the idea of the realm of possibility you can't you just gotta go, like you can yeah, do it yeah, yeah. You can do it. Like if you want it, you'll see someone who, you know, look at someone who's benched 300 kilos or whatever. These, you know, Ray Williams are these crazy power lifters. And you go look at them when they're teenagers. Like they're just a normal person mm. who trained for years and they accomplished this. Now you're not going to do the same thing as them. They're freaks. But the idea of like that improvement, is it out of your range? And again, like that little bit of fear, like maybe it is. And you've got to tell yourself, no, I can train for this. I'm going to get, I'm going to put a hundred kilo bag on top of my 200 kilo bag and make a 300 kilo bag and see if I can move it an inch and just stuff like that. And, you know, I, I won't go out these places until I know that I can do it, but you never 
never know on the day. Yeah, yeah. You never know on the day. And it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's like, uh, it, it's not, you know, it's a passion of mine. I love it. I love the history. I love being part of it. It's a real spiritual journey, I feel as well, when you're doing it. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's also something that, I feel helps with my grappling, which is I'm not a stone lifter. I'm a grappler first and foremost. And stone lifting is just like a, a, a side, a passion of mine. Mm, yeah. And I think so. I think it keeps life interesting and, and fresh. And that's it. Yeah. 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 You need, and I see a lot of people who they're grapplers and they just grapple. Maybe, and I've said before, like maybe, maybe that's a, maybe for that reason, I will never reach the levels that I could reach if I only grappled mm. and I didn't have any other outside interests. Maybe this will limit me, but then maybe you live one, once and it's worth doing that anyway. So How has your, uh, your jiu-jitsu changed as you've got stronger and done more and more of this? Well, you know, you're, I guess as a high level grappler, the strength is used less. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's used when you need it. And this is the thing that people don't understand. When, when you become people, for when I do seminars, for example, and I, and I demonstrate my favorite techniques and they're, you, you know, you can choke someone out by putting in 1% of your effort. I, I'll show you guys afterwards if you want. Yeah. Uh, like you can barely do it, like absolutely anything. And that's what I love about, um, it's what I love about jujitsu is the small details and the efficiency. Mm -hmm. Like true jujitsu is very, very efficient. So you don't need power to do anything. But what you do is you have that reserve of power if you need to use it, if something happens, someone tries to power out of that te technique, you have the resources to go into eighth gear and to outpace them. Um, so, so the style of jujitsu doesn't tra change dramatically or shouldn't change, change too dramatically with an increase of strength because if uh, your jujitsu technique was changing because of strength, there's something wrong with the fundamental basis of the technique in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what it does is, is incre increase the performance on the mat. Uh, you know, the small things like with the grip, being able to just hold someone a little bit longer and, and what it actually forces you to do. And what I do a lot is, um, and I'll say it to people, I'll go, I'll pull off a technique or they'll try and do something and I'll defend it and I'll go, no, nah, that, that wouldn't have worked if, if we were the same way. That wouldn't have worked if we had the same strength. And you've got to check yourself. Yeah. And this is the thing that you have, when you are a small person doing jujitsu, you get an, when you're doing jujitsu full stop, when you're rolling, when you're grappling, sparring, fighting each other, um, which is what makes, it's the difference between your martial arts and your fighting arts. You know, your martial arts, your Aikido, your no contact karate, a wing shot, all of this, the stuff that you don't actually spar. If you don't spar, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Nothing you do will work if you don't spar. That's why judo, wrestling, jujitsu, MMA, you spar. Therefore, it works. You have to test it. Mm -hmm. And one of the big factors of that testing is that you get this immediate feedback loop. You go to do something. So you think of something. You think I'm going to try and do this. You go to do it. It A, works. So you go, I did this. It worked. And you have a tick by it. Yeah. Or you go and do it. It didn't work. I tried this. It didn't work. And you put a cross by it. So if you're not using any strength and you're using pure technique, it is that simple. Uh, however, if you're stronger than someone, you can do a technique that shouldn't work. And it does. Yeah. Yeah. And if you aren't conscious of yourself and you're not aware then what happens is you do a shitty technique, it works because you powered through and you put a tick next to it. Yeah. So then when you come against someone who is as strong as you or stronger than you and you try and do the same thing, suddenly it doesn't work. So when you have more strength, you have to be smarter and more aware of yourself that just because it works doesn't mean it works. Yeah. And this is something that you try and explain to people as a coach. I say just because it worked doesn't mean it works. Precision and power. That's it. It's the same with parkour. You get some people who can jump really far, but then they've not got as much precision with that. And there's some people that can make the jump because they're so precise. And That's they it. Can do it. Yeah. So it seems very... So, yeah. so in, ter in terms of the strength altering your jiu-jitsu, it will help the performance, but it doesn't help the technique. Okay. It can it help sometimes. It can. Uh, it's the engine behind the car. If the steering wheel isn't moving in the right place, you're going to go crash, regardless yeah. of, of how big the engine is. But this sort of strength training, right, must be way more applicable than oh, someone man. coming in and doing back yeah. squats. Look, and I, I know, and I never, because I do talk about this and people ask me about this, like, I'm never going to put down 
back squats or bench press or barbell because for many years I did that stuff and it's just a tool. It's a tool. A sandbag's a tool and a kettlebell's a tool and a barbell's a tool and a dumbbell's a tool and everything is a tool. It's how you use it. But for me personally, the strength increases that I have felt. So when you say like, I guess I answered your question in terms of jujitsu technique, not against jujitsu performance. Mm -hmm. What you're really asking is, does all the sandbag training mean that you can beat people up better? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're really asking. And the answer to that is yes. But it's in a different way. Like when it comes down to the, you've got the technique plus your attributes, which is strength or your conditioning or your speed or your flexibility, that is, equals your performance. And the, I felt a big difference from the, the, the grip training that I did. Um, again, like anything- More applicable it, gains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's gradual, but then there, there are occasional things that I've done that have skyrocketed to a noticeable level. So for example, when I, there's a device up there called, from David Horn, they were really weird, the black one with the spring on it. Yeah. yeah. It's called the wrist developer yeah. and it mimics steel bending in a very specific yeah. style of steel bending. And I, when I got that originally, I didn't have that spring on it because it's quite a light spring, but it came with a really strong spring and I couldn't, yeah, you can grab it. That one, yeah. And uh, so what you do with this is you just grab this here and it's oh, like that, oh, right? Yeah. So you imagine if, if that's a nail, yeah. And then you can change the spring to make it easier or harder. But it, it came with a really, uh, so me, moving it up will make it slightly harder. Yeah. Uh, so that came with a really difficult spring and I could not do one rep. I wasn't even close. This was one of, this was on my original grip board. Um, I couldn't even do a single rep on that. And so what I did, I took the spring off and I got some rubber bands. Yeah. And I put, I put rubber band on and then I just carry it with me everywhere I went, in the car, in the gym, at home. And I just did a few reps every day, just kept on trying to do it. We can do some steel bending as well if you want there. Cool, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can upload that. Uh, and I just put, and every day I put another rubber band on. Yeah. To keep on doing it, just greasing the groove. You can, you can drop that. He's, he's jacked it up to, to superhuman. Yeah, the warm up weights. Yeah, that's it. So uh, I just added a rubber band on it every single day. One. And so you want it like pointing forward. So grab here and then you're there. Oh, I got you. That. You're in there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but you imagine how much, how much stronger that made your wrist. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I just yeah. added a rubber band yeah. every day until I had a shitload of rubber bands on there. Yeah. And then I took the rubber bands off and put the spring back on and I could do the spring. And then I remember rolling with someone and I, and I, and I hit an Americana and Americana is like quite a low percentage, sometimes low, but I use it quite a lot. I utilize it quite a lot. And I grabbed this guy and he's a strong guy as well. And I was like, like, I felt like I've been given a super serum. Like, honestly, I grabbed this Americana. I was like, what the hell my yeah. wrists are like? And, and I genuinely felt like it was from like the two weeks that I was just greasing yeah. the groove with this greasing and gradually groove, yeah. sort of like a, the, the, the Milo uh, growing the, lifting the baby calf every day until it was a cow. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Jumping idea. The inch. Quite that's it that that really incremental increases yeah. so like that i felt um that wrist strength the the having a strong forearm and when i say grip grip is from the tip of your finger to like the bot the top of your bicep it all of this is is, is grip for me okay. you know for, for me like biceps is grip a lot of forearm stuff as a as a no gi it's less fingers and a lot more sort of hooking strength and cupping strength here, a lot of yeah. arm rests and stuff. So a lot of people think the grip is just fingers. No, it's the, all the, the whole no arm. In the fingers, right? That's it's it, like it all comes, you know, there's some small muscles in the in the palm yeah. and then it's all coming from the forearm. So making sure that you train all of it. Pa and Pavel Sutsalini. Yeah, 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 He yeah. said the two fastest way to get stronger to improve your grip strength and yeah. improve your core. Yeah. And he talks about greasing the grip as well. And yeah, yeah like you look at, Rock climbing is such well, a But that's it, you know, sport, you, you, yeah. you must have good grip from uh, from doing all of that rock yeah, climbing Yeah, and Ninja stuff. Warrior is yeah. like a grip test, pretty yeah. much. You yeah. need a bit of agility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock climbers, do if they can have the agility of the free runner, they can do the, they get the furthest because they can yeah. last the longest on the grip strength. But yeah. it is like the unsung strength, like low-key hero, isn't it? Like, that 100%. Like poor Popeye forearm. That's it, and, 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 and that is, you know, uh, rock climbing and parkour and Ninja Warrior is a fantastic example of doesn't matter how strong you are if you can't put that onto something else. Mm. Wait, can you implement your strength into another object? Like through the fingers. Through you the fingers. You know, it doesn't matter how strong your lats are. If your fingers are giving out on that yeah. rock, then you're done. The rope climbing, which is a great yep. natural position, right? yeah. which we never train when we're doing pulls. So, man, this is, this is you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I... I it's funny because I talk about this all the time. And again, it comes down to, to, to grapplers, mm -hmm. which is 
exactly what you just said. This position, this vertical mm. gripping position is almost never trained. You train, people almost always train with a double anchor point. So imagine your anchor point is your barbell on each side. So it's equal on each side or it's a kettlebell and you're anchored on two sides or whatever it is, pull up bar. You don't train that um, vertical position. Yeah like you do in rock climbing, uh, in uh, rope climbing. Rope climbing. So. Now imagine I'm wrestling with you and we're grip flying. Yeah. Look at this position. Yeah. It's exactly the same. When you're grabbing onto, when you're wrestling, you're grabbing onto someone's wrist. You're not grabbing with a, a two anchor position. You're grabbing from a single anchor point position. You have to be strong in that vertical position. Mm -hmm. So another, another um, uh, event in grip sport is the vertical bar lift. Do no, they, so yeah. yeah, and that's. I and always even feel like, like the, you get so injuries in your forearm if you don't train that. You've you, got to train it all. You don't complete the system. Like it's, yeah. like it's got this spiral, the forearm wraps around and yep. it kind of ends here. Right? Yep. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, so, like, like uh, you know, there's a few things the handshake, the sword handle, even if you think about that. So, you're like yeah. pulling. This is, this is hilarious, man. I went to. This is another David Horn one. And yeah. uh, I, went, I, I went to his, and I'm lucky enough to. Um, David Horn, who. A guy who I thought, like, considered a legend um and i went up to stoke because i have an affiliate gym up in stoke and i went up and i went up to pick some equipment off of him and his daughter does jujitsu mm. so whereas i see him as a legend from the grip sports yeah. he sees me as a legend through the jujitsu yeah. so we had this really really nice mutual respect for each other and it meant that we created like a really nice friendship so i'm like so feel so privileged to be able to go and whenever I go up north to Stoke, I spend the entire day training with him and talking. The guy is just, I've never, I've never met someone with the knowledge that he has about strength training. Yeah. And I saw this thing he had, and I was like, what the hell is that? And he goes, it's a handshake device. Can you see this here? It's a mimic like a handshake. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, you need to make that. You need to release yeah. it. And then a little while later, he did and release it. it right? Yeah, you can load it on a loading pin. Yeah, and then you imagine, so yeah. You could just imagine like an old school uh, British yeah. uh, advert, like it's your grip strength uh, <laughs> making you look weak in those business meetings. Then you need a David Horn handshake grip trainer. But yeah, same yeah. idea though. Yeah. It's that vertical gripping position. Yeah. Uh, it's super important. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Good that you went into that because I find that so interesting. But you seem to have a lot more knowledge in grip, and you verify. Not hundred percent. Hundred percent. Point. You call it hundred percent. Yeah. And rope climbing is such a legendary like. The final thing in Ninja Warrior is a rope climb and That's firemen it. used to climb ropes and it's like been an old school such a, feat of strength. Such an never... old school. And I don't, unfortunately I don't have the height, but I've got ropes there and we're, we're, I have like a pulley system. Oh yeah. We're going to do some rope pulling. I've got yes. a really thick rope that I used to have up at the gym um, and, and the ropes over there. But uh, rope pulling is, if, if you had to talk about a tried and tested method of building all round strength, mm. Rope climbing is one of the best things out mm. there, hundred percent. One yeah. of the things I found when we were pulling rope is it engages your lower lap, mm. and you don't even think of that straight mm. away. And it's like that spiral pattern, like you talked about, where you twist in or automatically it switches that. Engages off. that, yeah. Mm. Rather than that, it's just like dead, isn't it? It's like, yeah, and you can and and sort of like the way you can pull rope in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And and it does depend whether you, are you dragging a sled or are you pulling vertically? Are you pulling from a pulley, which is at like 45 degree angle? And are you pulling, you know, so when I'm training with the rope on the pulley, with the pulley system allows you to overload or underload as much or little as you want. So sometimes we'll do reps, we're really heavy. Sometimes we'll be, keep it moving for two minutes. Don't stop, just but work that, that endurance. And, you know, sometimes you're, you're going to, I'll do like really, really tight in here where I'm doing small movements, working the inside and then the mm. other side you're doing really long grabs oh, and pulling through and, yeah. you know, releasing with one hand concentrically and yeah. Um, yeah. So much to be done. Yeah, but we'll play with the pulley system. That is really, we you must get requests for programs all the time from the jujitsu guys, surely. Yeah, I do. And I, I haven't, I've never, uh, I've never uh, given out any programs. It's not, it's not something that I'm opposed to doing. It might be, it's very difficult because People might see all of my equipment and go, I want to program. I'm like, well, you don't have anything, mm. you know? And, th and there is loads of way other ways to train it. I've actually, um, about m three or four weeks ago, I recorded a, because I've had, honestly, if I had a fiver for every time someone asked me to, how do I get into grip training? Then I'd be sorted. I would have yeah. twice as much equipment in here and a twice a bigger gym, you know, I'd be sorted. So uh, people always ask me, so instead of, and I, cause I had nothing to really give them. I had a few YouTube videos and I just give them a bit of advice. Uh, but I recorded like a, a, a an instructional video, basically. Yeah, just grip training for grapplers. It, you know, it works for people who aren't grapplers as well. But 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 obviously, it's folk, most people 
um, who are asking me, are grapplers and I am a grappler and just kind of talking. And I guess the main thing is about, it's not about making one aspect of your grip phenomenal. It's about making all aspects of your grip. You need that well-rounded grip. I was going to say, do you ever do like fingertips? You need every, you need a bit yeah. of everything. You know, yeah. you can need fingers, you need f- thumb, you need pinch, you need um, yeah, wrist, so you weird. need elbow, bicep, you need all of this stuff because if there is a weakness, it will be found. When you're just, if you're just, I want a strong de- uh, deadlift for, for um, I want a strong grip for deadlift. That's a very specific type of grip. It's a very, very specific, you only need to train it this way, you can overload it this way and you don't have to worry. When you're doing it for something like grappling, you may, okay, you're grabbing it, you're grappling in the gi, you're going to grab the lapel and you're going to grab like a closed hand support. Then you're grabbing the sleeve grip in a pocket grip and then you need to be engaging your fingers and then you're underhooking no gi and you need to be hitting your forearm and then you're trying to grab onto someone whilst you're maintaining the side control and it's got to be fingertip pressure and low, just, if you have one week weakness in any of that then it's going to be found out so uh so yeah i recorded it quite recently and i'm hoping in the next month or so just to 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 get that put out and sort of just be a a simple introduction not a program and i will put some programs in there as examples but not a program but an education for and and you can do it with anything you know you can train your grip with anything i show like loads of stuff you've got all the fancy stuff if you want but you can train it with a hammer and five bricks you know you can get a whole workout i've got bricks over there Mm. you know i've got like those wooden boards over there for an example i just like cut a bit of a two you know a piece of wood there and stick a um an eye eyelet screw in it and then you've got a pinch grip block that you can do a shitload of stuff with so it's very very versatile like all training is i've got a really incredibly well equipped gym now but i started with one barbell and you know yeah. i just had a chain that i got from b&q with a clip on it that i used as a pull-up belt and i've got like hooks in the ceiling there from that's where i i just had the, the stirrup handles and that was my pull-up bar because i didn't have a pull-up bar or a rack or anything mm. i just build it up but you don't need to have fancy stuff and i think that's the beauty of training and that's kind of the beauty of the rocks as well like you can just you can go into you can walk into the woods and just pick up trees mm. do pull up off of a tree climb a tree run a little uh, see a log on the floor pick up the log the log's really heavy so you're going to squat it that one's a bit lighter so you can press it and that one's a cool shape so you can curl it and you can get a whole workout just like that so that is it yeah i think that's a good point to end on you know Let yeah because we want to get playing as well absolutely yeah we sat here want to get moving but that's it i think you know if, if if you're interested in doing any of the sort of training that i'm doing like you don't need i guess that's the main thing like i have all of the equipment because i'm obsessed with it and i love it mm. you don't need anything you do not need anything to train you can like it's your mind you right? just you just need the mind exactly and that's it that's the most important muscle and that's not muscle but you, you get the Creativity, idea man. Yeah. It, it is the most important organ in the body it's the most important thing to train because with 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 a strong mind and an open mind and creativity you can just do whatever you want regardless of the situation you're in um but yeah so my man Dan. Really? I'm sure we're going to capture some more stuff of the training session. So oh, yeah, for sure. Check out the YouTube for that. But thank you for having this conversation. No, it's a pleasure, man. Real really, really cool chance. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. Cheers, boys. Anything to finish on, Josh? Uh, so, just all, do, you, do you want to just go through all our stuff? So, Dan, where can people find you? Yes, yeah. uh, yeah, so I can do the, the what I usually do at the end of my podcast, <laughs> which is you can find me at uh, raspberryape.com. You'll find me on Instagram, which is raspberry underscore ape. Uh, you can email me at uh, dan at raspberryape.com. Uh, what else? That's about it, really. YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash raspberry ape. Yeah, check out your email. your email. That's, my, <laughs> that's, one of, that's one of my emails. It's not my personal email. That's my raspberry ape email. So, uh, so f- for my stuff, it's ape underscore nutrition on Instagram and then uh, ape nutrition.co.uk is the website. Uh, CBD, MCT oil, keto, bars. I love those bars, man. Thank you. I got some for Whenever you. Whenever you send me them, they go so quickly. <laughs> yeah, they do, man. They go um, so quickly. Yeah. And then Lion's Mane and Cool Sets, Mushroom Products, and some cool t shirts. Yes. You got the T's, save mine for training. Um, but yeah, humantimothy.co.uk or dot com or both work, I think. <laughs> Uh, for the ropes I got the ropes I got pro pulses I got the more modern versions of the pulses right now the first UK distributor See that yeah I saw, I saw that you yeah. are you going to get the um, clubs in by is any that what you re- I, I was thinking to reach out to get some other stuff because I think I think clubs because they offered me BOSUs as well but they're interesting well club, BOSUs you can kind of get anywhere yeah. but the clubs are interesting I get Proper he doesn't BOSUs, put that so much stuff okay, there's yeah, only yeah. one place in the UK but yeah really? the clubs yeah. there's no one distributing them in the UK yeah yeah like, yeah the clubs the are really RMC interesting clubs. yeah yeah because yeah. the beads in the end move around yeah 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 like I've, I've used them once it was just they were in a random gym that I went to in Australia I oh, think and I had to play with them but I almost bought them okay with your ver- certification now we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see I'll speak to them but, um, but yeah you can check out we've got ropes and we've got 
pulses and we've got some some more ropes news to announce probably in the next episode but yeah stay tuned human timothy at humantimothy.co.uk humantimothy. at instagram at humantimothy and that's it for rediscover human catch you on the next one sweet cheers guys awesome cool guys nice one nice cool yes good chat bro nice one brother yes awesome nice one bro